After nearly 50 years of military rule and isolation, Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, is a land where time has almost stood still. Since 2011, however, the country has begun to open up and introduce reforms. It is changing rapidly. Between the Indian subcontinent and Southeast Asia lies the country of Myanmar. Its life and character has been shaped by the Irrawaddy River. Over 2,000 kilometers long, it is the central transport route and connects the historic locations. In the north of the country, the Iowadi is heavily traveled by cargo and passenger ships. Many of them date from the colonial era. The Hantawadi has traveled the river for almost 70 years. And Ula Shwe is her captain. The ferry boat is approaching the final stop for all the large boats, the town of Bamor. Even during the time of the British colonial rule, Bamor was the last outpost in northern Myanmar. The market is lively and its population multi-ethnic. The border to China is only 35 kilometers away. The roads are in terrible condition, unsafe and often impassable. Thus, goods come to the city by boat or are smuggled from nearby China. It is late afternoon and Captain Ula Shui enjoys a cup of coffee. Towards evening, the port of Bamor quietens down quickly. But with the first rays of the morning sun, the river port awakens. Lined with jetties and landing piers, it is a lively hub of trade and commercial activity. The Hantawadi is also being loaded for her return trip. When she's ready to depart, the captain boards. 
and off she goes, this time downstream. The Ayawari is wide, sometimes even several kilometers, but it is not deep. It carries enormous amounts of sediment from the mountains, so its navigable channel changes constantly. Then the Ayawadi passes through a rocky chain of hills. Myanmar is a Buddhist country and the river is lined with countless golden stupas, pagodas and monasteries. The monastery Letsau Khan lies in the middle of the second gorge. It houses six monks and U Nimata is the abbot. ဒီဘဝအခြေခံမှာပထမဆုံးလုပ်ကတာပါပဲဒီအဲ့ဒီမိတ်ကတ်တန်ရှင်းမှုနဲ့လိုတာလုံးပုံနေကိုင်းပု
Aung Ko Win is 12 years old and an Uzi in training. He will grow up together with his young elephant. He will work with and be bound to the elephant his entire life. The Uzi alone and no one else leads and trains his elephant. And even when bathing in the river, which elephants love above all else, the Uzi and his elephant are inseparable. An elephant has a lot to learn. It must be able to understand and follow 24 different commands. Finished with their bath, the animals are now waiting for Dr. Miao Manu, the veterinarian. Only after 15 years does an elephant start working in the jungle. It takes a long time for the animal to get used to carrying people and loads and following the commands of its Uzi. Finally, it is time to go to work. The elephants work in the jungle forest, where they transport valuable teakwood trunks. The tropical rainforest is the greatest treasure of the country. But 40% of the forest has already been cut down. Wood is loaded, legally and illegally, everywhere along the river. Teakwood trunks are heavier than water, so traditionally they are rafted downriver with outrigger boats. The winter, when pleasant weather is the rule, is the season of temple celebrations. The people go on pilgrimages to holy places, such as the river island near the town of Shuegu. Here, hundreds of stupas house relics of veneration. Nothing shapes the everyday life of the people as much as the Theravada Buddhism, which reached the area in the 3rd century BC. Yeah. 
Good deeds, donations or pilgrimages facilitate a rebirth into a better life. Particularly constructive is the donation of a pagoda or the gilding of an existing one. And the gold of the pagodas comes from the river. Since time immemorial, gold has been mined along its shores. In areas where the river sediment contains a lot of gold, mining is conducted on a large scale. All the workers are young, as no one can take the back-breaking work for a long time. This mine near Shweigu has 20 claims and thus 20 mining teams. A single team consists of eight people. Women also work the claims. Ten hours a day amidst the deafening noise of the pumps, barefoot in cold water. The ramps are the heart of the site. The water, flowing neither too quickly nor too slowly, carries the gold down. At the small town of Shvegu, the Hantawadi makes a short stopover. As at all piers along the river, there's plenty of food available for the passengers and crew. Towards evening, the government ferry approaches the small town of Kata, located on the upper reaches of the Ayawadi. For the passengers and Captain Ula Shui, a long journey is coming to an end. Tomorrow, however, the captain will go back upstream to Bamor. In 
the early morning, the monks walk through the streets of Qatar. They accept everything that people put into their bowls and without a word of thanks. It is those who give who are grateful that they can do a good deed and so gain good karma. With the monks' daily collecting of arms, the town of Qatar wakes up. The town had its heyday during the colonial time, when the English controlled the whole north of the country from here. They brought engineers, soldiers and administrators from British India, including the grandfather of Mario Tenai. In Upper Burma, Qatar is the largest town. The river and railway and land roads are here. So they, they keep the Justic offices and, and other central jail all here. He is over 80 years old, but Mario still remembers the colonial times. The British writer George Orwell was stationed in Qatar as a police officer. In his novel Burmese Days, he depicts the elitism and arrogance of the British. For example, at the British club, where only British nationals were allowed to enter. The building still stands today, and the tennis court is still playable. George Orwell's house also still exists. This is where he decided to leave the military and begin writing. It was here that he came to hate imperialism. Tintin Eye produces a speciality for which the town is known across the entire country. Her business is dependent on the river, or rather on a tiny fish called Napier, which is endemic to the Ayawadi and thrives particularly well around Qatar. The fish are processed in Tintin Eye's house. The mixture ferments a little and has a long shelf life. It tastes somewhat sour and can be eaten either cold or fried. Tintin Eye offers it in various sizes, ranging from 500 gram packets to 70 kilo baskets. <laughs> It's early in the morning, around 5 a.m., and the speedboat is being loaded for the trip to the city of Mandalay. The boat, named Silver Moon, belongs to 27-year-old Winwa So. Before each boat trip, Winwa So reads Buddhist verses. When her father died three years ago, she had to take over the business. For a number of years now, 
private express boats like that of Winwaso have been operating alongside the government ferries. Passengers can board the boat anytime and anywhere, including in the middle of the river. Winwaso originally wanted to become a biologist. Now, however, she supports a large family as a ship owner. The boat stops at all larger villages. In northern Myanmar, where there are virtually no roads, these boats are the only link to the outside world. Winmarso never stops anywhere very long. After all, she does run an express boat. In the winter, the mornings can sometimes be extremely cold, and within minutes, a thick fog can roll in. The greatest danger at times like this is that of accidentally leaving the channel and hitting a sandbank. But just as quickly as the fog rolls in, it rolls back out. Up ahead, the temple town of Tichang comes into sight. Immediately, the first food sellers appear alongside the express boat. All boats traveling the river stop at Tichyang for lunch. The entire city lives by providing passengers with food. The women of Tichyang are in constant competition to see who can conjure up the best dish from the wok. The large government ferries are also boarded by the cooking women before they have even properly docked. Passengers can choose from the full spectrum of Burmese cuisine in which the influences of India, China and Thailand merge. The Ayawadi, Myanmar's great river, is unspoiled and ecologically intact. It provides fish in abundance and irrigates the rice fields. To some extent, the people here live a very archaic life. A life without roads or electricity. In the village of Mitanji, he lives with his extended family. He has seven children, all married. <laughs> 
Four generations, a total of 28 people, share one house. Wu Tintang is 58 years old and a fisherman. Like everyone in the village, he has a very special way of fishing, with very special helpers. ดูรู้อย่างนั้นโมบูมอยู่วันละจังหวะดีบีดามีชาบูมอ่ะบ่เปียวเสียมันเลยจังหวะดาเป็นนักกองชีเดียวสุดาจังหวะชีกองชีเ
families cut it or buy it in the north of Myanmar and float it downriver to the city of Mandalay. Or even further downstream. On this raft travel three families, complete with child, hearth and home. They've already been on the river for an entire week. ကျုံးမွယ်တာအိုင်းဆိုဆိုဝါဝါလဲကျုံးမွယ်လွန်မျိုးတွေကွဲပြဲပြီးတော့လေအဲ့လိုတစားသည်ဖြစ်ပြီ
hammer weighs seven pounds. The job is bad for the back, but good for the karma, because San San Shui and her craftsmen work for the pagodas. Buckskin protects the fine bamboo paper sheets between which the little gold nuggets lie. A coconut shell helps keep count of the number of hammer blows. It takes three minutes for the shell to fill with water, which corresponds to 120 blows. San San Shui is 30 years old and has been in the gold leaf business for the past 10 years. Her four brothers beat the gold. The sisters mount it on paper and prepare the small bundles for sale. Her small business, which she runs, doesn't leave her any free time. <laughs> At the end of a work chain that starts with the back-breaking work of the miners on the Ayawadi, the gold leaf is a thousandth of a millimeter thick. ไอ้ไอ้ตัวอตုံးปิ้งโรเมียบ่าวุฒิไดเมดีตูโรดิหาดิมีลิ้นชวยเส้นยาวโรพูดิมาไอ้ยาวบ่าเดไอ้อัด
finally, the distribution of small sums of money to relatives and neighbors is deeply Buddhist too. The recipients help the givers achieve religious merit. And in the end, there is reason for everyone involved to rejoice. Mandalay is the main transshipment point of central Myanmar. And now, as then, many goods of trade arrive and leave via the Ayawadi. The large bamboo rafts all moor in a specific area of the river port. And while tying the raft together is painstaking work, the dismantling goes quickly. Bamboo is widely used in Myanmar. Light, very strong and elastic, it has been used since time immemorial as a building material. The bamboo is processed before it even leaves the port area. Among other things, bamboo mats and hut walls are woven. At the bustling riverfront port, Monk Owen is renting a small ferry boat for the next day. Nowhere else in Myanmar are as many monks and Buddhist monasteries found as in Mandalay. Many monasteries have schools attached. The Fang Dao U monastic school is known throughout the country. An extremely popular teacher is Chao Dui, whom everyone calls Monk Owen. Orphans, children of poor families, and monastic novices receive primary, middle, and higher education here. The school is free of charge. The young monk is also in demand among the other teachers because he is well versed in using the internet. He even has a blog of his own in which he comments on the rapid changes happening in Myanmar. We have contacts with the world, you know. We can read news from the internet, for example. So it is a very good. We, have, we can think, you know, further than the class of Rome. We are going to school to learn a critical thing, to think ourselves, to lead ourselves, uh, not uh, during what the people say or what the people say. Unayaka is the abbot of the monastery and the headmaster of the school. Some call him the Dalai Lama of Myanmar. His principles are completely different than those of the state schools. In Myanmar, normally they are learning by heart. That is no good in their life. They are afraid of this teacher. They can have no thinking. That's why the Buddhas uh, like the critical thinking. That is Buddha's way. We, that's why also we like the Buddha thinking. Buddhas never like the fear. We respect that it should be with the loving kindness. That is good. That is the Buddha's way. Monk Owen teaches English, a language that is becoming increasingly important in the daily life of the children. Still, they like the excursions with the young teacher much more than they do English grammar. <laughs> it 
it is only 20 kilometers from Mandalay to the hills of Sagaing. Buddhist monasteries, temples and pagodas shine and shimmer all along the Ayawadi, but nowhere are there as many as in Sagaing. For some of the children, this is their first visit here. They learn that Sagaing is only one of many historical places that lie on the shores of Myanmar's Great River. There are more further downstream the Ayawadi, places like Bagan or the metropolis of Yangon. 